Good morning and welcome to this service again coming from our home in Haxley Vicarage. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. It's the 17th of May 2020 and, uh, and we are still being asked to stay away from one another, um, socially distancing ourselves and also our church buildings are still closed. Um, when they will be open we don't yet know but um, hopefully it won't be too much longer, but it's, it's certainly going to be several more weeks or even you know, over a month or so. Today's service is um, concerning a bit about Paul and uh, what he has, has to say to us and what we can learn from him. Um, and, and as usual, it's a communion service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength, and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, Lord, Heavenly King, King Almighty King, God and Father, Father we, we worship you, we, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for the sixth Sunday of Easter. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us, he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody. This week, I'm reading from Acts 17, verses 22 to 31. Paul stood and said, Athenaeans, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the, op at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, 
since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of the, your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that all deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of the mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we come to the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 14, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Many Christians have mixed feelings about the Apostle Paul. Paul can be challenging to deal with. Some New Testament writings attributed to him express negative views of women and other minorities. And his tone can be aggressive and argumentative. And Paul's philosophy seems to be sometimes why use 20 words when 200 will do? But if we're going to be followers of Jesus, we have to come to terms with Paul. For one thing, even though the Gospels appeared before Paul's letters in the New Testament, Paul's writings came first. It is indisputable that Paul is our first written Christian witness. Sometimes Paul is appealing and sometimes he's appalling. Whether Paul is appealing or appalling can depend on which Paul you mean. For instance, 1st and 2nd Timothy contain most of the sexist things Paul supposedly said. In other epistles, he argues for a radical equality of all believers, male and female, based on our adoption into the body of Christ through baptism. For example, in the letter to the Galatians, Paul writes that in Christ there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. This is a good example of the appealing Paul. We also see the appealing side of Paul in our reading from the book of Acts today. 
In this reading, we encounter Paul preaching to the elite of Athens on the Areopagus on Mars Hill, the centre of Athenian government. Notice how Paul tailors his message to connect with the Athenians in a way that they can hear the good news he is trying to share. He is preaching to an entirely pagan audience, so he doesn't rely on his usual references to the law of Moses or the Old Testament prophets. What do these people know about Moses? Instead, Paul quotes a couple of Athenian poet philosophers. Paul compliments how religious the Athenians are with their many idols, noting how this indicates the natural desire within everyone to seek after God, hoping to find meaning in the world. Paul is concerned, however, that all these idols will prevent the Athenians from making a connection to the living Lord. Our culture is no less littered with idols than Athens was in the first century, and I wonder what Paul would make of the world today if he came to preach. Our idols are less literal than the statues found in Athens, but they serve the same purpose. They are makers of our search for meaning, markers of our search for meaning, but all of them in some way or another fall short of this goal. An idol, by its very nature, stands in the place of God, occupying a place of ultimate concern in our hearts and preventing us from connecting with the true and living God. What is the ultimate concern in your life? Many of us spend our time worrying about money or appearance or power, and we allow these worries to become idols, taking up all the space in our hearts and not giving God any room to live inside us. And I'm sure that our point of, of interest has really shifted over these last few weeks as we are all locked down, unable to socialise, unable to go about our normal daily work and having to really think about what is important. Paul says to the Athenians that they are looking for God in the wrong places. God is not contained in little gold statues or indeed in anything that springs from the art and imagination of mortals. God is not to be found in anxious worries about money and appearance and power. Where should we look for God then? Paul tells the Athenians that the unknown God they have been searching for is within them. This unknown God is the source and supporter of all, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. I love that phrase. God is radically present to each and every one of us, and we find God in the communities and relationships we build with others, each person a bearer of the image of God. Most of all, God is revealed to us in the person of Jesus. But Paul's final testimony to the Athenians about his embodied vision of God is to tell them about Jesus. God has given us assurance of God's embodied presence among us by raising Jesus from the dead, not just spiritually. Paul's claim is that God restored Jesus' earthly body. And this was a sticking point for the Athenians. Greek philosophy held that the physical body was inferior, impure. All of Greek philosophy pointed in the direction of escaping this dirty physical existence into a world of pure spirit. It was absurd to imagine a God who entered into human flesh to live and die as one of us. It's not surprising that many of the Athenians listened to Paul's message and they scoffed. They simply couldn't imagine a God like this, a God who would succumb to the dirt and sweat and suffering of this life, just so that we could know him better. And yet, this is the God Jesus reveals to us, a God willing to walk with us even when the road gets tough, a God yearning to be with us in the simple, ordinary things of life, in bread broken and wine outpoured, a God embodied in community that spills forth into the world, in abundance and love. If you are looking for God today, look at one another. God's image is revealed in every face you see and everyone you encounter outside of your doors, albeit at a safe distance. Like Paul, we are called to go into the world and share God's good news. 
and share it with everyone we encounter and in language they can understand. Just as Paul adjusted his message so that the Athenians could encounter God, we are called to talk about God's love in today's vernacular so that everyone can hear it. In the gospel passage today, Jesus tells his disciples that he is sending them another advocate, the spirit of truth. As Jesus has been their comforter, helper, their guide, their intercessor and advocate in the three years of their relationship with him, upon his departure they will have another, one sent from the Father. This advocate, who will continue Jesus' presence among them and work with them forever, Jesus calls the Spirit of Truth. The three subsequent times Jesus speaks of this coming one, he identifies the Advocate as the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God who proceeds from the Father at Jesus' request, who in fact will not come until Jesus returns. This gift is not simply the Spirit of life among humans. This is no universal possession. This is a gift from God specifically to Jesus' followers. Jesus says the world can neither see nor know the Spirit, the Spirit has not been given to the world, only to those who follow Jesus. And in fact, when the Spirit finally does descend to the disciples on Pentecost, what does the word of onlookers conclude? They think the disciples are drunk. Interesting, isn't it? The world can see the manifestations of the Spirit present in the disciples, but the world cannot comprehend the Spirit. That said, Jesus adds this next promise, the most startling promise of them all. You will know him because he abides with you. He will be in you. This go between God is not only being sent among Jesus' disciples so that what they as the church ask in his name will be accomplished. Moreover, the spirit of God is being sent to dwell not only among them, but within them individually as well as collectively. The Holy Spirit, the present tense of God, the one who initiates the divine human relationship we call the life of faith. The one who first quickens us to an awareness of God's presence in the world around us. The one who gives us faith. The one who makes Christ present among us when we gather in Christ's name. The one dwelling in us. And that never changes. Jesus says that this spirit will abide with us and live inside us. If we open our hearts and invite God's spirit in, no idols we make will be able to withstand the truth of God's love. And it's God's living spirit in us that inspires us to go into the world and share God's love as widely as possible, even if it seems the world cannot or will not receive this message. The world may not know God's spirit of truth and love yet, but it will. If we allow God's truth and God's love to live in us and speak through us. So what about us today? It's fine to talk all about all this in theological terms, but where is the good news in this for us? On Easter Day, we proclaim triumphantly in our homes, Christ is risen. That victory does not simply set us an example, but has a creative effect on us on, and on all creation. Our hearts and wills are transformed. We are released from bondage, made whole and brought into the kingdom of God's son. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, proclaimed John at the beginning of his gospel. And last Sunday, we heard that the father dwells in Jesus on the cusp of ascension tide with Jesus' promise of another advocate to dwell with us forever ringing in our ears, like Paul's pagan audience and Jesus' disciples, Christ's continual presence dwelling with us raises us to eternal joy. But I'm left pondering what difference this glorious truth may make in our lives day by day. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
So we respond to God's word and declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord, in you we live and move and have our being, for we are your children, and you are not far from any one of us. We pray for all who are currently considering baptism or confirmation, even in these difficult times, and that we with them may know, may know that we dwell in you and you in us. We pray for Christians who are struggling in lonely or difficult places, for all who feel forsaken, for all who are longing to know your love. We pray for all who seek to do your will and fulfil your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for countries where laws are being flouted. We pray for nations and peoples who are in danger of destroying themselves or others. We pray for all who seek to live in simplicity, in gentleness and reverence. For all who suffer for doing good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By your indwelling presence, make our hearts and our homes places of peace. We pray for peace in our communities, for peace in our relationships, that your peace may spread throughout our world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are captives to superstition or ignorance, for all who have no knowledge of God, for all whose lives are empty or filled with the wrong things. We remember before you all whose lives are falling apart, all who are entering into darkness or sickness, that each in their weakness may know your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, if we abide in you and you are in us, we are already in the fullness of that life which is eternal. We rejoice in your presence and pray for loved ones and friends who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We have a few moments of quiet. Lord Jesus, you have promised to be with us forever. Teach us to rejoice in your presence. Free us from all anxiety. Help us to know that you are always at hand, that we may work with you and to your glory. And so, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia.
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace with, with you. you. <laughs> peace be with you. Never quite sure whether I'm getting that right or not. But never mind. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise for the gospel we have received. Christ died for our sins. Alleluia. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Death comes to all through Adam and sin reigns for a time. New life without end comes through Christ, and he reigns forever. Alleluia. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Death is swallowed up in victory, the victory you give us in Christ. Alleluia. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. We have been crucified with Christ and live his risen life to praise you forever with angels and archangels. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. 
Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. May the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. And to the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, gives the water of eternal life. May we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining us this day. And I hope you'll be able to join us again and keep up to date with what's going on in the life of the church, even in these times of lockdown. Just a reminder that this coming Thursday is Ascension Day, so I will be sending out some more um, resources for Ascension Day. And also the Diocese of Lincoln will be um, hosting a service on online on Thursday at 11 o'clock. So for more details of that, please go to the Lincoln Diocesan website. Thank you for joining us and please keep safe. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.